to come to you with the word of God. I'm so excited that we continue building up on what we were talking about the last time we dealt with the courts of heaven. And remember, God the Father is the judge and Christ Jesus is the advocate. And remember that the Bible tells us that there is an accuser of the brethren and his name is the devil. So before I start, let's go into a time of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring the word in Jesus' name. Amen. In the higher courts of heaven, you need to understand how to navigate yourself and prayers and how to pray, to put your prayers through, uh, to gain the victory that was already won by Christ Jesus for you. A lot of people don't understand that. They think that the fact that Christ won the victory, there is nothing that should bother them. But I'm telling you today that the accuser of the brethren is always trying to put you down. Huh? There is an accuser of the brethren he tries to tie you down to crimes or things that are in, you know, are in your bloodline. Things done by your forefathers and things that you didn't do. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So we, when he's cast down, now where is he operating from? Is operating here on earth, and I want you to understand that. So, as a child of God, you need to know that he is the king of this world. You see, one thing that the disciples did, they pleaded with the Lord Jesus Christ to teach them to pray. He said, teach us to pray just like John taught his disciples teach us to pray prayer must be taught because many people pray amiss so as I said Jesus Christ is your advocate but the one contending against you even though there is a good judgment that is on your behalf can put forth an appeal when a judgment is given in your favor. So judgment has already been given in your favor according to the word of God. So it's important that you understand and you know that when a judgment is granted, it's no time to celebrate as yet. There are things that you need to start doing 
as a child of God. Hmm? Are you with me? Stand with me and listen to me properly. You must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. The Bible tells us. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. I'm reading from the King James Version. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sex forgive I it in the person of Christ. Lest certain, lest certain should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Do you see that? He's got plans, he's got a lot of knowledge concerning your bloodline, the altars that your forefathers built. He's got evidence of things that he can bring forth. And it's very important that you, as a child of God, are always alert. Don't allow the enemy to play with you. Don't allow the enemy to take advantage of you. Don't give the enemy a foothold. Yes. So, child of God, you should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. He's got many things that he has put in place, many landmines. You know, if you have seen any movie or you have experienced war, you see that sometimes the enemy puts landmines or bombs, you know, under the soil in places that you don't know. And at the end of the day, you step on it and you're gone. So you need to be diligent and to be in a place of understanding. Praise God. So here we saw that Jesus speaks about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of those things that will help the enemy to bring down your positive judgment. Stick with me. He will bring down your positive judgment using unforgiveness. So if you have any unforgiveness in your life, I am challenging you today. Get into a place of forgiving. You see, when you are a person who does not forgive, you, the challenge is you are carrying a load yourself that is not being carried by the person that you are not forgiving. If the person that you are not forgiving went to the Lord and asked for forgiveness, and you have held on to their trespasses or to whatever challenges that they put through you, you are the one in trouble. You are carrying a rock that you should not be carrying through life. Throw away that rock. Forgive that person. You remember the word telling us that when you come to the altar to offer an offering and you remember that you have something that you disagreed with a brother or with someone else, he says, leave your sacrifice on the altar and go make peace with your brother. And when you have made peace with your brother, then come back and offer your sacrifice. Then your sacrifice is more effective than you ever thought. Praise God. So don't hold unforgiveness. It's one of those things that the enemy will use to keep you in bondage and to steal your positive judgment. You see, let's go to Hebrews 10, verse 38. It says, now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith. So you collect your judgment, your positive judgment, using faith. You see, when you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it gives us testimonies of many people who by faith 
were able to do exploits. How did they do it? It was through understanding the fact that they need to walk by faith, not in ignorance, but in understanding. Are you with me, somebody? In understanding. So it's important for you to be in a place of understanding. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hmm? So the enemy has many tactics that he uses. Sometimes he goes to appeal your judgment. Maybe in the lower court or in the high court or in the supreme court. He will continue appealing. What is he doing? He's stealing time from you. And time is of particular importance. Time is something that cannot be replaced immediately. Praise God. So pray that the judge refuses an appeal that the enemy brings. The enemy will look for frivolous reasons against you. And you can even accuse the judge of making an error. Praise God. Look at the story of Job. The enemy says to God, when God says, have you seen my son Job? And he says, oh, yeah, he's a good man but it's because you've put a fence around him. Nothing can touch him. That's why he is righteous. Well, let me tell you something. That's what the devil tries to do every time. But today I want you to know that he who digs a hole must fall into it. And the one who breaks a hedge, must fall into it. And that's the devil. Hallelujah. Huh? There are different types of matters that can be brought before a judge. There's a criminal matter, and also there is a civil matter. A criminal matter is where, you know, the devil is accusing you of sins, or things that you know you have done. That will land you in jail. Which is why it's important to go to God and say, God, forgive me. Every time you get up, Lord, forgive me for any sins committed or for anything that I have omitted it's very important for you to do that because you don't want to be entangled in a crime that is not yours. You need to be a person who walks in discernment so that the accuser of the brethren does not catch you. Are you with me, somebody? Stand with me, stick with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in a civil matter, it's your own things. The enemy can come and claim your own house that you have paid for. Are you hearing me? And then you have to appear in the court to challenge the enemy. The Constitution, which is the Word of God, gives you the right to that prosperity, to that house which belongs to you. Don't allow the devil to steal it from you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So immediately you need to act fast. You need not to waste time. Pause. Yeah. Civil matter. So when we talk civil matter, it's important that, you know, when the judge is looking at a civil matter, it's on a balance of probabilities. And when he is looking at a criminal matter, it's on a thing, what do we call it? He is looking at it on beyond all reasonable doubt. So 
you need to make sure that, you know, when you have committed any sin, the Bible tells us go and repent immediately. Then you cancel that issue. And when you go to the Father before the Father and you are accused, is beyond all reasonable doubt, but repentance has cancelled it out. Praise God. On a civil matter, if you don't do anything, you just sit back and you wait and you just say, ah, miracles will happen and so forth and so forth. You are in trouble. You will lose your house, you will lose your car, you will lose your things. The next thing is the auctioneer is there, auctioning your things whilst you're looking. And you know definitely that it wasn't your fault. It's the accuser who stole your things and all that. At the end of the day, you go into depression and some end up killing themselves over that. And they say, where is God and what, what. But here we are teaching you how to approach the courts of heaven and gain victories over and over again. And when you win, don't sit back. The enemy always comes back. You remember Jesus saying that, you know, we, we, we told in the word of God that, uh, you know, Jesus, when he defeated the enemy using the word of God, the word of God is your case law. Are you hearing me? When the enemy was saying it is written, Jesus also answered and said, no, no, you're saying it in the wrong way. It is written this way. So you need to know the word of God as a child of God. You need to know what is written. Don't depend on your apostle, on your pastor, on an evangelist, on uh, your teacher, on your pastor. No, read the word for yourself. Be like the church of Berea that listened to Paul and after that, when they went home, they went and studied the word of God. And when they studied the word of God, they came back and they said, Oh, Brother Paul, what you were saying yesterday is powerful. And it's in agreement with the scriptures. Hallelujah. And when you pray, pray that the costs that accrued during the case go to the accuser. You don't want to remain with costs of suit. The accuser is the one who must carry those costs. Let's go to Psalm 43 as I close. Psalm 43, verse 3 to 4, it says, Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God. You want to go to the altar of God, child of God. That's the place you want to go to. And so the psalmist here is asking for light and truth. Light is revelation. You need revelation when you approach the courts of heaven. You need revelational knowledge. Not just earthly knowledge, but revelational knowledge. And he says, thy truth, the truth is the word of God. And he says, let them lead me. These are the things that must lead you in the court. Huh? Let them bring me unto thy holy hill. They are the ones that bring you into a place of spiritual comfort. Praise God. And to thy tabernacles. That's the place that Everyone wants to be. If you're a Christian, you want to be in that place. He says, then will I go unto the altar of God, unto the God, unto God my exceeding joy. So the judge, God himself, must be your exceeding joy. Joy is important. Don't approach the courts of heaven with, uh, you know, uh, accusing God of why God, why me, and so forth. No. Approach him with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. 
So, you know, praise is how you close your case. When you bring praises unto him, when you start giving him praise and giving him honor, you know that you have gained the victory. So, child of God, with these few words today, I want you to understand how to continue to navigate the courts of heaven. God bless you. Grow in your knowledge of the Word of God by interacting with the teachings of author, apostle, advocate, and entrepreneur, Apostle Charles Magaiza. Apostle Charles has written many titles over the years, which include Secrets to Answered Prayers, The Foundation of All Miracles and Divine Intervention, from the Shepherd's Desk Daily Devotional, 366 Daily Devotions. Into His Presence, Christian Poetry Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Overcoming Grief Through Prayer, Spiritual Guidance on How to Handle Emotion. Breaking the Invisible Barriers, Expand and Grow Beyond Your Existing Boundaries. Fasting and Prayer, Unlock the Door to Deeper Spirituality. 31 Day Daily Devotional Words, Prayers and Declarations to Change Your Life You can download all these life transforming books from the Amazon online store Al Shaddai World Ministries Taking the Power of God to the Nations